Routine preventative maintenance of your pneumatic flow aid system. It's quite a mouthful, but if you're not practicing it, be prepared to pay in terms of increased energy costs, process downtime, and possible hazardous conditions. Or find out how easy it is to keep your pneumatic flow aid components up to snuff and your material flowing right now. Hi, Paul the Air Sweep Guy here to discuss routine preventative maintenance of pneumatic flow aid system components. Now routine preventative maintenance is a pretty simple concept. It just means selecting a service interval to change out certain parts within the flow aid system in order to prevent big problems from occurring. So we want to change out some of these replaceable parts before there's a problem, not afterwards. Now we're going to be dealing with the air sweep system, so we're looking at solenoid valves and the air sweep nozzles themselves. But these practices really apply to any kind of pneumatic flow aid system that might use similar items. In this segment, we'll focus on preventative maintenance of the solenoid operated high flow diaphragm valves that are used in the air sweep system. When the electrical solenoid is activated, the valve instantly opens and releases a high volume pulse of pressurized air or gas, which is then dispersed by the air sweep nozzle into the vessel to promote material flow. After many pulses in what may be hot, dirty, dusty, or corrosive environments, inspection and parts change out is required on a regular schedule to keep them running properly. For example, this inch and a half diaphragm valve has an upper and lower diaphragm, both of which flex with each pulse. After a large number of flexes, the diaphragms may stiffen and no longer reseat properly, causing leaks, performance issues, and even equipment failure. A small leak may initially just be a nuisance, but could grow into a much larger problem if not addressed early on. Now that you know how important it is to replace these parts on a regular basis, it's time to show you how easy it is. Let's do it! Now this high flow diaphragm valve with separate pilot and integral solenoid is really easy to service. The pilot valve spins on and off with our fingers. We can get at the diaphragm valve to service it. And then once the pilot is off, we can get at the solenoid to service the parts of the solenoid. We don't have to disconnect it from the air sweep. We don't have to disconnect it from the air supply. All we need to do is depressurize the system and bleed it and make sure the power is off and we can get to work. So the first thing we're going to do is disconnect the plug from the solenoid coil. The power's off, so let's go ahead. Just a simple Phillips head screw and pull the plug out. Simple as that. Now we can disconnect the pilot valve itself. All we need to do is just spin it off. They've made it so easy to do. Now we can just spin it right off. That's it. That's off. Now we can go service this. First we're going to do the diaphragm though. So I like to use a power drill, but you can use a socket wrench or any kind of wrench to take off these bonnet bolts. Let's do it. And there's the diaphragm. Now we're just going to blow out the inside of the diaphragm valve, make sure there's no debris in there, and replace the diaphragm. So I got my replacement diaphragm kit, there it is, and per the manufacturer's instructions, the tab should be positioned opposite the air inlet. So we've got it positioned properly, we're going to put the bonnet back on, and screw it back into place. It's as simple as that. Now per the manufacturer's instructions, we tighten the cover in a cross pattern make sure it's tightened evenly on the diaphragm so we don't distort the cover in any way or cause a leak. Now let's look at the pilot valve. So here's the pilot valve that we took off of the 3 quarter inch diaphragm valve. It's a small pilot valve assembly with an integral solenoid so that's what we're going to rebuild. First we'll remove the retaining clip and pull the coil off from the ferrule tube. And now loosen the three screws holding on the ferrule retainer, or cover. Now we can remove the plunger and plunger spring, and remove the ferrule tube from the cover. We'll set the cover aside because we're going to reuse it. The internal parts are going to be replaced. 
Next, we remove the O-rings on both sides of the pilot assembly. Here's the kit with all the replacement parts. Let's do it. The contents of the kit contains all of the internal parts and some new fasteners. So we have the ferrule assembly and plunger with the spring, the coil retaining clip, the cover screws, three O-rings, and a plastic spacer that we're not going to use with the QR coil, so we can get rid of it. So the first thing we do is insert the plunger spring inside the plunger, and you make sure the tight coiled end is protruding out of the plunger. Now we can insert the plunger into the ferrule tube and install the small O-ring on the outside of the ferrule tube, sliding it all the way down to the base. Next, we can install the other two O-rings onto the pilot assembly. Now we position the ferrule tube complete with plunger and spring onto the pilot assembly and hold it there while we slip the retainer cover over the tube, lining it up with the tapped holes. Now we just install the screws and tighten evenly. Now we can slip the dust shroud onto the pilot and slip the coil over the ferrule tube and clip the retainer on the top. And that's it. It's ready to be reinstalled onto the diaphragm valve. Again, no tools are needed. We can just screw it right back in with our fingers. Just screw it right into place. And finger tighten. And that's it. Put the coil back on. And tighten up the coil. And we're ready to repressurize and test it out. So now we're going to take a look at the larger diaphragm valves that we use. This is an inch and a half diaphragm valve connected to the VA51 air sweep. We also use it with the VA12 air sweep. It's got two diaphragms, a main diaphragm and an upper diaphragm. And then it's got the integral solenoid. It's built in. It's actually the same solenoid as the smaller one that we looked at with the pilot valve. But this one's built in. We can't just simply unscrew it. We actually have to remove the main bonnet to get to the, uh, both the uh, main diaphragm and the upper diaphragm, and then we can also get to the solenoid as well and repair that. Um, so first we have to take off the solenoid coil to get at the rest of it, and we can take off the bonnet. So we've depressurized the system, we've turned off the power, now we can remove the coil and service the valve. So we remove the clip, get the coil off, Spring. Here's the diaphragm and the bleed pin. So here's the main bonnet, the upper bonnet with the secondary or upper diaphragm still in here, and the solenoid. We're going to work on this on the bench. So here on the bench, we've got the main cover from the diaphragm valve. And of course it has a secondary cover on it and the solenoid. So we'll remove the screws from the secondary diaphragm. Now we can see there's the spring, the diaphragm, and the secondary bleed pin, which actually does not come out. Now the solenoid kit for this model comes with all the parts of the solenoid. So we're going to remove all the parts and uh, just replace them with the new ones. We'll go ahead and remove the screws from the tube retainer. Pull that off, set it aside. And all these parts are actually going to be replaced. The tube, the core, the core spring, and the O-ring. We'll take that out. And that's ready to be cleaned out, and we'll put the new parts in. So first we put the O-ring on the tube, put the core with the spring in place, put the other O-ring 
inside. Barrel tube goes back on and we just put the cover back in place and screw it down. One thing to mention before we reinstall the diaphragms is the bleed holes. These bleed holes need to be cleaned, they need to be clear, free of debris for this valve to function properly and you can see we can see through it. That's good. It's always good to blow these out. Make sure there's no debris in them. There's some very small ones. They're very important to be clear of material. So this is the diaphragm kit for the inch and a half valve. It comes with the main diaphragm, secondary diaphragm, and the two springs. So now it's time to install the new diaphragm, secondary diaphragm. We can install the secondary cover and put the main cover and the new main diaphragm back on the valve and the valve will be all set and ready to go. So we'll install the secondary diaphragm, line up the bleed hole over that pin. Spring is in place. The uh, pin goes over this part and that's lined up correctly. All set ready to install it with a new main diaphragm on the valve. Okay, now that we replaced the solenoid and the upper diaphragm, now it's time to replace the main diaphragm and put the valve back together. So, first thing is we have to insert the bleed pin and now we can put that main diaphragm up onto the valve body. We're gonna take, we're gonna take that spring we're going to put that main bonnet cover on and line up that bleed pin. And we'll thread these bolts back in. Now we just need to put the coil back on, put the retaining clip in, and it's good to go. I hope you found that interesting and informative. If you have any questions or need help with parts or tips on how to rebuild any of these components, please feel free to contact me. Email at paul at airsweepsystems.com or call our 800 number, 800-662-4762 and ask for the Airsweep Guy. Until then, I'm Paul the Airsweep Guy, here to help you keep it flowing.